What is up? I'm Wanna Turtle, and today we're going to be talking about some of the new Sword and Shield cards that have been leaked. Uh, in case you didn't know, you can find the whole set list on PokeBeach.com. Uh, shout out to them for always keeping us up to date with the latest news and leaks. Uh, so we're going to go through a handful of non-V cards. I almost said non-GX. Non-V, non-V Max cards that kind of caught my eye, and I feel like have a lot of potential to have some pretty broken. Um, pretty broken mechanics that could turn into some really OP decks. So let's start with our first one, which is Centiscorch. Uh, so this one is a stage one, so not too bad as far as like the uh, requirements to get up to this point. And we're gonna focus on, actually go through a second attack first, Searing Flame for one fire, three colorless, 110 damage your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. To be honest, that is all around bad, huge cost. Okay, nah, just okay damage and burn is whatever. Uh, but let's look at flame spread just for one fire energy. Now this is interesting. Discard a card from the top of your opponent's deck for each fire energy attached to this Pokemon. So basically, mill your opponent for all of your energy. And uh, so obviously this could be some kind of mill strategy. <clears throat> And I think what two things that jump out to me is we actually did a deck profile about like the baby's deck, uh, which could do a OTK if you can get 16 energy on that tag team. And I wonder if some kind of similar strategy could work here. And the thing is like, yeah, if you kind of mill 16 cards or whatever, uh, like kind of like a fourth of their starting deck, uh, is that going to be enough? And I actually think come Sword and Shield, it might be. Uh, because a lot of the supporters, you know, yes, um, Cynthia is kind of like shuffle your hand into your deck. Uh, but uh, going forward, a lot of the new supporters like the Professor Magnolia is kind of like discard your hand and then draw. So if that's going to be kind of like the main supporter for card draw, you know, the your deck will be thinned out very quickly. And so come turn four, maybe there's only, you know, 20, 30 cards left in your deck. And then all of a sudden you do that. Uh, you can wipe away half of those and you, you can pull that off twice. You know, that might be GG right there. So, um, you know, currently I'm not sure how this would work, but I feel like there's a lot of potential here. And I'm sure like brewers could find some uh, ver a very efficient way to ramp that up really quickly. And then, you know, discard your entire opponent's deck and that's GG right there. So first card that caught our eye is Scorch. Going on to the next one is Galarian Perserker. Um, first off, this Pokemon is, is not as bad as the uh, Galarian Persian, but this thing is still pretty ugly. And I do like the idea of this card. Uh, so, I mean, for its attack, 70 damage. No, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Steely Spirit. Uh, the attacks of your metal Pokemon do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. I always like kind of things that just buff from the bench, and I feel like they're kind of taking a different approach with, uh, you know, metal Pokemon, where things like the Full Metal, Wall Lucario, Mel Metal Tag Team, and a lot of the uh, support was all about kind of like buffing your, your active by preventing damage. Well, this one's going the exact opposite direction with just making all your metal Pokemon do more damage, which uh, to be honest is a lot more exciting to me versus just like making yourself live longer. It's like, oh, well, let's knock out of our opponent instead. So, um, you know, I feel like this card has a lot of potential anytime that you have a buffer. It is a stage one, which is not ideal compared to like Deancey or something, uh, but definitely this thing has caught my eye and I'm curious to see what kind of things uh, we can do with it. Moving on to Chinchino. Chinchino, I'm not sure how to say it. And uh, the Zorark trade ability is back. Uh, yes, this thing has an attack. 40 damage, attack to basic energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. Actually, that's not bad. If it comes into the active, you know, compared to Zorark, Zorark, you know, would do, could easily do 120 damage if you had a full bench. Um, this one is a non G or non V, so it's only one prize card. And if it does get into active, it's not like it won't do anything, it won't do much. But uh, the thrifty ability is all we really care about. And uh, so once in your turn, you may discard a card from your hand if you do draw two cards and kind of like this, you know, a lot of control strategies, load up your bench with these guys, go through your deck as quickly as possible to get whatever cards you're looking for to establish whatever control or strategy you're going for. So I'm very confident that Cinchino will be very relevant come the launch of Sword and Shield. Coming in next, we have Orb Beetle. This one is a stage two grass Pokemon. Once again, we're just looking at that ability. There's some super strong abilities in these Sword and Shield cards, but we'll take a look at the attack. Brainwave, 90 plus damage, grass colorless. This attack does 30 more damage times the amount of psychic energy attached 
attached to this Pokemon. Eh, whatever. Yes, uh, it can build up, but probably not. What's more importantly is this bug radar, and this thing is super scary when it comes to some like prison control decks kind of thing. Uh, once during your turn, you may look at the top three cards of your opponent's deck and put them back in any order. You know, if uh, that Chip Chip Ice Axe was, was a viable in certain situations, this one, well, it can't move anything to the bottom, uh, it just does reorder. So if your opponent ever gets into a position where they're playing off the top of the deck, they have no more card draw as far as supporters like that, and then you have Orb Beetle setup, I feel like that's almost always GG. Like you need three outs on top of your deck in order to draw any of them. So yeah, I feel like this card's really scary, uh, especially for myself where I really don't really enjoy facing against control decks, not because I think that they're lame, I think they're they're perfect, uh, there's nothing wrong with them, I just, it takes forever to go through a match and uh, you know, being an online player, that's kind of annoying to me. So this thing scares me. <laughs> Alright, now we have another grass Pokemon, Gossifleur, I'm guessing that's how you say it. And uh, we're going to primarily looking at its first attack, Razor Leaf 10 damage, yeah, whatever. Uh, but this one is a basic and has a very interesting ability. I feel like this is a great way to start any match. Call for family, search your deck for up to three basic Pokemon. And, you know, it can be GX, it can be V or whatever. And put them onto your bench and then shuffle your deck. What a strong start, just kind of set everything up. And uh, yeah, pretty straightforward, but I feel like it has a lot of potential. And even when you evolve it, so actually, one thing about Gossip Floor, it's, it's colorless. So you can actually use this for, it doesn't matter what kind of deck you are, you maybe you don't have any grass energy. Uh, you can just use this just to establish your bench. Maybe you use it to get a bunch of Minginos to turn into Chinchinos. Um, so search for Call for Family, very, uh, sounds very useful to start off the match. And then when you evolve it to Eldegoss, um, this one does require it to be a grass-based deck. Colorful, graceful fuzz, search your deck for three grass energy and attach them to your Pokemon any way you like. Uh, that's just massive ramp. Sword and Shield has so much ramp, a lot of D-ramp, whatever you want to call that. And yeah, sure has another attack for third damage. Of course, we're not really focused on that. Uh, but Eldegoss, you know, especially on the grass side, I would say this thing is not as strong as Rillaboom, which uh, we, we covered in a previous video. That thing is absolutely busted. But this thing is just a stage one, and the basic version does, you know, it can kind of create a nice ramp for turns. Uh, compared to Rillaboom, you either have to evolve it twice or Rare Candy. Um, so, you know, I feel like Grass type has so much potential just to kind of like uh, needs like one or two turns to set up and then things will just really explode. So, um, you know, Elder Goss comes in just like another non, non V, non GX Pokemon that, yeah, something to look out for. Uh, this, these are kind of like, I feel like, core parts of a really uh, powerful engine and you know there's probably gonna be a lots of different payoffs that people will be trying but these things will be kind of, kind of like core to the strategy so uh, as always guys that's gonna be it for today as always let me know what your thoughts are in a comment down below um, what card catches your eye the most whether we covered it or not uh, there's still so many cards in the set to go over so we're going to be doing that in future videos uh, to come so definitely stay tuned for that but uh, yeah as always guys thanks for watching like comment and subscribe all down below I'm Moana Turtle and I'll catch you guys next time